This is Amanda Ripley. If you pick up the signal, proceed with extreme caution. There's an alien organism in the station. It is deadly. I can only track it. But if we keep it together, we'll make it through this. Oh no. Go, go, go. Ripley, hide now. Hi guys, and welcome to a quick episode about the brand new mobile game called Alien Blackout. And I'm also with my lovely fiance, Tessa Baker. So let's just go, Ignina Morphe, we're diving right down into this. We have this new game that had the return of Amanda Ripley. And for those right now wondering, and Fox has confirmed this, that this is not the direct sequel to Alien Isolation. So, Mike, myself, and you guys, and my fiancé, we can have a breath of relief right there. This is not the direct sequel to Alien Isolation, I will say it again. Thank goodness. Now, on to the game. When we first started this, uh, right away it gave off a vibe. And that vibe was... Five Nights at Freddy's. Right. So, and why is that, babe? Why why did Alien Blackout here feel like Five Nights at Freddy? Because you have to use cameras to look around for the xenomorph. You have to watch vents, seal them off to survive. Yes, while guiding the... Four other... People to survive in. Survival. Or to their death. Dun, dun, dun. What is interesting is the cameras sometimes. And yes, there's a little bit of motion tracking going on, but it's weird how they do it. But it, in a way, does it almost as if you're playing Five Nights at Freddy where you got like that available power and you can only use so much if, as long as you got the available amount, which is about five power uh, nods, we'll say. But what, what you can do is you can use, like, let's say, four of the motion tracker's rooms and you can close one door. Or you can use one motion tracker room and you can use the rest for sealing doors. It's kind of cool and works like that. But you got to also remember you need to watch and get out of the screen for the cameras while you're watching the other crew members because you... You need to also protect yourself, just like Five Nights at Freddy. And when you first start, Amanda Ripley does have at least one uh, vent you need to watch. But as you progress, you get like two and then three. Which can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. Especially on that last mission, which we'll get into uh, later on down the road of this episode. But right now, let's talk the game mechanics of what we got to do and see. So, as Tessa was saying, you know, we got to guide the crew and all this other jazz. But, we also need to keep ourselves alive. So, within this map, like I was saying, you have the ability to even touch a door even by looking through the camera you can touch the door to shut the door or whatever I mean you always have a content button to your survivors of trying to make them survive or die like I said which kind of goes into this whole thing like as if it's an outlast sort of deal because you basically have to run hide or die. Or die. And and with Outlast, you don't fight back. So, they don't even have a flamethrower or noise. So, uh, there's no way for you to fight back in this game. Right. So, you, you literally just tell the person to hurry the fuck up, sneak, so you, you don't, they don't get heard. Or hide. Or hide and come out when it's safe. 
And that can be even be a very big pain when it comes to telling them to come out because it's quote unquote safe. And that is because there's not that many cameras. You There's not always a camera in specific room. Just like in a mission that Tessa will be talking about called Mushroom Picker. And a little bit about that. But just to, for this segment is... You know, sometimes it can be a pain because you could literally be sitting there for two minutes and the alien could be giving you that problem and not wanting to leave that room. So now that survivor is stuck there. Yeah, because you don't have any way of seeing if the xenomorph is still in the room or if it's gone. There's no way to be 100% positive that your survivor will be safe once they come out of hiding. Yeah, and that can just be a big problem. So, you you know, you're watching the time go down, which is about eight, or seven to eight minutes before the blackout, where in which case Amanda Ripley automatically dies because there's no power and stuff like that. So you have to do each mission... Before. Within within the eight minutes, otherwise, if it blacks out, game over. Yeah, the point that Amanda Ripley is at will become her tomb, pretty much, as the game pretty much states. Now, real quick, babe, uh, we've heard Fox kind of say something about this. Now, what are your thoughts on Amanda Ripley being the future of Alien? Uh, I'm kind of 50-50 about the idea of her being... The future protagonist of Alien. Um, I mean, if it's done, if it's done right, I guess it could work. But it really, it really depends on where, what direction they take her. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you, especially when we don't really have a movie that mention. Well, we do. I think it's actually in the director's cut of Aliens, I believe. It's either that one or the first movie. I do know the daughter was mentioned in one of the movies, but the only time you heard it was the director's cut. And I want to say it was definitely Aliens, I want to say. Or no, I think it was actually the first Alien. Yeah, I think it was the first Alien because um, I think it was Ellen Ripley mentioning something about trying to find her, her daughter or something like that. Mm-hmm. And anyway, to get to this point of Alien Blackout, though, is so I guess because we all know Ellen Ripley, so is it because she's the infamous, fem- you know, f- reading female protagonist that is Amanda Ripley going to become that, that sh- strong female protagonist? And we kind of seen what she can do already with Alien Isolation. Which, yeah, I think we did state that. If not, I'm going to state it right now. That this mobile game entitled Alien Blackout is not the direct sequel to Alien Isolation. So there is your breath of relief. Phew! Because otherwise, myself, Tessa here, and probably you guys listening... Be thoroughly disappointed. ...will be beyond disappointed. Like everybody already is, because everybody has heard this game in the works from last year, January, and a year later is when it finally gets released. And we did already know that it was called Alien Blackout, we just didn't know it was a mobile game. Anyway, moving on. Now, as the levels keep progressing, not only... The Alien is very aggressive as the game, you know, keeps going. And there's only seven levels. Now, one thing I need to point out is you better make sure that you definitely know an area is is in fact safe. Because otherwise, you're going to end up with, like me, with one of the gameplay that you're going to see down below if you want to check out my Alien Blackout gameplay. Is that there was one time where I had the motion tracker on, I had a... Lady Hayden. Utani. Utani Hayden. And I literally was waiting, waiting, and then it got to the point where I 
thought it was safe, but as soon as I told her to come out, the alien whooped by really fast. And because of that, she... Screamed. Screamed, freaked out, a xenomorph came and killed her ass. Because typical female fucking screaming. But, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Well, in this case, I think she would have been fine, but because, you know, the red dot was literally, like... There and gone. No, it was literally past where she was hiding, but I think because of her screaming, it, it turned around and killed her. Bolted back. I think that's what happened. It's really hard to really say for sure, but just watch the gameplay, and you'll see what I mean. Now, let's talk about your favorite uh, level, well, maybe favorite, but and that is the mushroom picker. And why is that? Because they mention, they mentioned the spores. And the reason why I say this is because if for the alien fans out there or those who have seen the alien movies, all of the alien movies, um, spores are mentioned and seen in... Prometheus and Alien Covenant and how they um, became like this like bioweapon or whatever of the alien race and how they infect people and what they do to even engineers kind of like how the opening scene of Prometheus is the engineer that drank it and just like Disintegrate. disintegrate or whatever into the water but then when we see david give a drink to sean later on in the movie what do and we Prometheus. see yeah that it's almost as if um he the, the, his he's, body's um, rejecting it in a way and or, it's eating him from the inside yeah, out yeah because he's not looking so good <laughs> at one part down the road of prometheus but then we also see it again with what it can do with uh, engineers' uh, home world, I guess, or some type of world uh, that involved the engineers is, um, you know, what David has, I guess, created. Because you got to remember, he's been awake for probably 10 years while Elizabeth Shaw has been hypersleeping. So, so he's he, probably created the perfect strain of it. To wipe out anything and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Alien Covenant showed what I'm talking about anyway. But it just that's kind of interesting, though, that this game brought it up. Because originally, Prometheus was going to have some sort of alien spore thing going on that could actually use the vents and stuff like that with the spores. And it's just interesting concept that they had. But uh, they, they kind of brought it into Alien Covenant just a little bit. So, yeah, we got that. But, so, I'm trying to think what we need to talk about as well. Um, How about the graphics for the game? Yeah, the graphics for a mobile game are pretty spot on. It's uh, pretty clear and not so bad looking. And, you know, it's just pretty nice to look at, especially the alien. Yeah, the Xenomorph did turn out really well for the mobile game as well, considering it's a mobile game. But I think they did really well with it, and the graphics are clear, and um, the way that they did it was really neat. Yeah. Now, what about the controls, where you got to bounce back through the cameras and stuff like that? What did you think of those? like seeing it anyway i thought it was kind of interesting but it looked like you had a little bit of trouble at certain points I manipulating did. the controls yeah i did because i don't know if it's because of the phone i have which is the samsung galaxy s9 or what but there is some time where i was pressing the button thing to get out of the cameras to look around where amanda ripley is to make sure i'm not getting ambushed by the alien or if I do hear the alien, it's not, it's almost like I couldn't get out fast enough sometimes. So, there's that little be mistake, I guess. Otherwise, I need the damn tra soundtrack. 
That's the only problem right now, that the soundtrack is not available to purchase. So you need to put that on YouTube, uh, iTunes. Yes, yes. iTunes and YouTube, I mean, put it on one of those. I mean, come on now. This was a good soundtrack, good good little soundtrack and for Paul the environment. And Paul loves his soundtrack, so. Yes, so get on that now. <laughs> Do it now, D3 Go. Don't disappoint me on that. And, you know, so... I think that's really about it. I mean, the only other thing I can really think of is, like, you know, like I said before, too, is, thank God this is not the direct sequel to Alien Isolation. Uh, we got some different type of outcomes we can actually do, because we start off with two females, two males, and depending on who lives or dies or whatever, <clears throat> it will... It's pretty much you can either try to save everybody or kill almost everybody off except for one survivor. Yeah, and that one survivor you will have until all the way up until the end of the game. So, like, with me, it was Thorncroft. Me and Thorncroft got out. Now, I think that's about it, really. So, real quick, babe, is this worth $5 to get? Yeah, I think it's worth 5 bucks. You... It's not bad for a mobile game, honestly, and you get seven levels worth of gameplay for five bucks. And if you if you guys like Five Nights at Freddy's and you like Aliens, you'll like this. Yes, I completely 100% agree. And then, if you need more Alien of Amanda Ripley, then check out that brand new comic that is out and coming out. It is called Alien Resistance. The first issue came out January 23rd, a day before Alien Blackout came out. So there's going to be about four comics for this series, and it also stars Amanda Ripley. Then, after you're done with this, or if you have already started already, is we got the Alien 3, the unused script comic book. Which is actually really cool. And I can't wait to see the rest of that come out into play. But for somebody like me, I wait until all the issues are in one book and that's it. And then he'll read it. And then I'll read it. I'd rather have it all in one book than having multiple books everywhere, I guess. Anyway, for those that were listening for just this small little review... Which is, yeah, I mean, like Tessa said, if you like Five Nights at Freddy's, if you're a big fan of Alien, then check this out. It's better to just maybe play it yourself. But, if you're really skeptical, make sure you check out my gameplay below with the description of this episode. And check it out for yourself, judge it for yourself. And, you know, just have some fun with it, being open-minded, I mean... When we first heard about Alien Blackout, we are like, oh god, here we go, mobile game, this is gonna blow, what the fuck? Yeah, we were skeptical of it ourselves, and <clears> when we saw, like, the first couple of minutes of it where it had, like, a Five Nights at Freddy's feel, we also were kind of a little skeptical, but we, we, wanted, to keep, we wanted to keep an open mind because it's a mobile game. Yeah, we let the Five Nights at Freddy thing on a phone fly just because, you know, you can only do so much on a, on a phone anyway, really. I mean, there is games where you can move the character and stuff, but I find that to be very hard at times. It's kind of like with the AVP Evolution, which is another interesting mobile game. So, yeah, it's, it's nice. But anyway, for those that want to leave right now of this episode, be, without going into the spoilers of the ending a little bit, um, even though you probably already know. But anyway, if you're wanting to get out, Thank you for listening to our little rant of what we thought of Alien Blackout. If we missed anything, I'd like to hear your comment, and i would gladly answer as best as I can. But for now, if you want to keep up with the podcast of Everything Horror, just go to our website at ehpodcast, that is E-H-P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S dot com, and that has all the links of where you can find us on social media, our Patreon, our PayPal, everything all the platforms that you can even listen to us on in this episode because you found us somehow right if you're listening to this right now so thank you again <clears throat> now 
let's go into the ending. So, the ending kind of leaves off, once again, a little cliffhanger, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Because we see, well, my remaining survivor, which was Thorncroft, and myself, Amanda Ripley, go into the door, slam in the door behind the Xenomorph's face, and we blast out into space to head to another place. What do you think of this ending? I'm kind of curious as to what they're going to do with it, um, where they're going to go with it, if anything. And um, as you said, you, our last uh, sight of the xenomorph on the ship is having the door slammed in its face before um, you and Thornheart blast out into space. Thorncroft. Thorncroft, sorry, thank you. Blast out into space, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally haven't read the new... Alien Resistance comic, so it makes me wonder if somehow the new comic maybe ties into Alien Blackout. I was just thinking about that because it is, you know, we got Aunt Amanda Ripley's crew, as the book kind of stated, and then we got this other weird crew that kind of go at it in the comic, it seems, just by judging from the preview that I've seen. So, there's that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, could this be leading to something else? Which we already know that Cold Iron Studios is working on a Alien Universe game as well. And this one is actually for consoles and PC versus this mobile game. But, this is a this upcoming game that we don't really know too much information about is also a a shooter game and supposedly a MMO, a massive multiplayer online type of experience, which that kind of makes me wonder if they're trying to redeem themselves from alien colonial marines failure. But so there's that, I guess. Because as we all know, thanks to Fox, Alien Isolation 2 is definitely not in development, but we should have known that anyway because the people that worked on the first Alien Isolation is no longer with Creative Assembly anyway. So there's that downfall right there, unfortunately. But yes, that ending can definitely go into some interesting possibilities, I would say, as the ship could go anywhere, especially if they don't go to where they're supposed to go. Exactly. So, you, it's pretty much one of those endings where you're not sure what's going to happen, if it's going to progress, or where the characters are going to end up. And that's why I was saying, like a second ago, that maybe this new Alien, I, uh, Alien Resistance comic could maybe be the tie-in to this game. Maybe. Don't quote me on that, but it is a thought. I mean, we also still don't know what the hell Cold Iron Studios is working on either. Uh, other than that, I think that really wraps it up. I can't really think of anything else. Can you? Mm, not really. Is there anything that you feel that we missed? Not really. Um, I think we covered everything. I mean, um, <clears throat> the alien was pretty relentless in your last couple of missions. It got increasingly aggressive. Oh, yeah. Especially that last mission. Oh, boy. That yeah, was fun. It was definitely out out for blood yes um the only thing that i don't know did we talk about the not enough cameras i forgot yeah we did we did yeah okay then and there yeah. there should have been like cameras in like certain areas for sure like paul said because it was really like blind spots like you really didn't know if it was safe or not also it would have been cool to see uh cameras in um certain areas like one of the missions that paul was on where the mushroom picker, the mushroom picker where there was like 10 red dots up on the screen and we didn't know what it was yeah that would have been cool to see yeah i agree i mean i don't know if that was all xenomorph or if that was just face huggers or combination we just don't know it would have been nice to have known though yeah, that would have been cool. Because that was a hell of a lot of red dots. Yeah. 
And that was the mission where I was just like, oh God, if I die now. So I started shutting all the doors. I started to take off motion trackers and using the available power nod, as I'm calling it, to shut doors so I could just keep this guy, uh, Thorncroft, alive. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, Hope you enjoyed our little uh, little review. debate, I guess. Yeah. Little debate about um, yeah, Amanda Ripley's return with uh, Alien Blackout. I'm just, once again, glad this is not a direct sequel to Alien Isolation. Otherwise, I would have definitely been pissed. But hopefully somewhere down the road we will see an Alien Isolation 2. But I'd like to know your thoughts. Did you beat it yet? Have you gotten it? Are you going to get it? Did you feel like we missed anything in this topic? Let us know below in the comics and I, uh, comments. And I will uh, definitely answer them as best as I can. But until then, like we always say, Stay, stay scary. scary.